Having windvane self-steering gear is often seen as the mark of a true cruising boat. It can cost thousands of dollars for a commercial unit which won't work on most trailer sailors. In this video I build a modified trim tab wind vane steering system and discuss some of the essential design requirements of all wind vane steering systems. My system consists of a balanced steering rudder or trim tab attached to the rear of the transom mounted rudder box. Cables on either side of the daggerboard rudder attach to a control lever on the tiller handle to control the trim tab's movement. This in turn is operated by a bell crank and a push rod connected to the vane head above. A counterweight returns the vane to vertical when the wind is not acting upon it. A 10 degree rearward tilt is built into the head. This has a feathering effect on the vane, causing the tilt of the vane to slow the further it goes over. The vane consists of a small aluminium plate attached to two 1 metre long 10 millimetre aluminium tubes. The top is held apart by a 50 centimetre long piece of high tensile fencing wire. Parallel plates in the vane head hold the vane, which is secured by a bolt and a wing nut. The vane is covered with lightweight nylon keeping the whole vane as light as possible. The head of the vane must be able to rotate to set course heading in relation to wind direction. I had to use a 3kg counterweight due to the space restrictions in my setup. It is always better to use a smaller weight and a longer balance arm wherever possible. I used a 32mm tube as the body of the system to hold the vane at the top to guide and protect the vane push rod and to support and operate the bell crank at the bottom. The most critical part of any wind vane self-steering system is to build feedback into the system. Put simply, this means the lever controlling the trim trap must be approximately 20% of the rudder width forward or rearward of the main pintles. This causes the control lever to return to neutral as the rudder turns. Without this, the rudder would swing wildly, causing the boat to zigzag badly. If you watch carefully, you will see feedback in action as the control lever centers after each control input. The trim tab pintles must be strong enough to take considerable sideways force of the trim tab which has no lower support. The trim tab was fashioned from a piece of Tasmanian oak hardwood by planing, sanding and cutting.
Once finished, three coats of marine varnish were applied to finish the job. During trials, I made two widths of trim tab, but found the narrow one gave the better result. Balancing the trim tab is critical to reduce steering pressure and make the system work better. Put simply, this means the trim tab should rotate around a line 20% off the trim tab's width from the front edge. It is important to be able to lift the steering trim tab when not required. In my design, it swings up and out of the way. It is also important to be able to lock the system in a straight ahead position. I use a simple link that locks the vane control lever. In the end, if you get it all right, you will end up with a system that magically guides your boat through the ocean silently and without the need for power. This is an example of Naringa's track beating into a 20 knot headwind controlled only by the system built in this video. Thank you.